Hey everybody, and welcome to Spriggan Studios. I'm your host, Mr. Spriggan. Yeah! Yes! Why am I so happy? Because I am here to tell you something very exciting. The news is a little bit old, but it's still exciting. And that is, Spriggan Studios Etsy shop has finally opened. Yeah! Yes, it is open. And I've sold two dioramas to an excellent super chap named Eric. Yes, uh, he bought two of my dioramas. Oh, and it touched my heart. And I'm so happy. And uh, a third one is going to be purchased potentially in June by some good folks. And uh, I also sold some little custom spray can things recently. So I should have done this a long time ago. Apparently uh, my things uh, are somewhat nice. Uh, so what am I doing exactly in this video? Well, as you might be able to see, I have a diorama right here. Yes, this is a part of the budget series. Yes, my dioramas that I'm selling on the cheap. Uh, so this one right here, for example, is $45 Canadian. Yes, so if you're in America, you can buy this for like 12 cents. Yeah, uh, not really, but the conversion is helpful. And uh, these simple little dioramas here uh, are perfect for your IKEA Detolf cases, display cases, yes. Uh, they fit perfectly like a glove. They come with some cool little accessory things and some lights and uh, each one is unique and different, magnetized, and they uh, are pretty nice for displaying things, if I do say so myself. Um, and this video is not just uh, for sales purposes, trying to like drive you to my shop or anything like that. I'm actually here for those of you who, instead of buying, would kind of like to try your hand at building them on your own. So I'm going to teach you how to make one of these nice simple dioramas. Listen to all those birdies out there. Mm, all those nice spriggans. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm going to teach you how to make a nice uh, simple diorama like this and uh, then you can take what you've learned here and uh, go on and build bigger dioramas or anything that you uh, wish. Now, I'm no expert or anything like that, um, but uh, I think I can make a pretty cool looking dial, so I'm, uh, I think I can help you make uh, just as well. Yes. So, how about uh, we dive in? I'm going to show you all the materials to grab and uh, everything you'll need. Yes, it can be done, you know, fairly on the cheap. Just kind of a little bit time consuming, yes, but it's super fun. So, let's uh, dive right in here. This is me swimming. Alright peoples, let's uh, have a look at some basic supplies here. First, we'll look at, I guess, some tools. So we have this, what is this called? L, L ruler or something? I don't know. I know there's T rulers or those T, T things. Um, and then a regular long uh, ruler. Now this is like uh, for quilting or something. It's like super long, it's 24 inches and it's clear so you can see through, which is nice. Um, and uh, as you can see, we have all these lines here. So that'll help you uh, with your measurements of stuff. And that's pretty good. And the reason we have this uh, L one here is so that we can make nice straight uh, 90 degree things and help us. Uh, if you have a T one, that's even better. But I have this uh, L one thing here. And it's important to have uh, these larger rulers because uh, if you're gonna be making a diorama, you're gonna need something probably bigger than this standard uh, 12 inch ruler. But uh, if you just wanna make it 12 inch by 12 inch or something, then go ahead. Use one of these uh, metal ruler thingies. It's good if you have a grippy bottom. This one doesn't, but yeah, I recommend a grippy bottom ruler. Okay, so those are that. You need, this is super duper duper important. You need a uh, good X-Acto blade. Yes, this is uh, Ulfa and uh, we got our replacement, replacement guys here, blades. It's important to use a sharp blade when you're gonna be cutting the foam. So you can get nice clean cuts and no choppy, uh, broken up bits. Yes, so super important. We have our uh, hot glue gun. This one has a couple of settings here. Um, yeah, this is uh, very handy indeed. Um, we got magnets, yes. Now the magnets I use is this uh, three quarter of an inch ceramic ones you can get at the hardware store. Um, 
And also these ones, these magnets that you get at uh, Amazon, the size is escaping me right now. They're pretty small. I think they're something like three millimeters or, or something or other, but I'll put that in the description or I'll mention it again uh, in a minute. Um, obviously we got our uh, paint brushes here. Yeah, because we're gonna be needing to do some painting. We got our, something to put paint in. You can use uh, whatever you find, really. It's no big, no, uh, nothing super important. Uh, paints, yes, as for paints, just cheap hobby craft paint that can be found at the dollar store, Walmart, or uh, local art supply stores. Yes, you don't need anything super fancy. Just, uh, you know, it's easy to grab a bunch of colors because they're only like a buck to three dollars each. Um, some of them I found, I think, that are even like 80 cents each. And uh, yeah, it's really, really cool and fun. So just grab some of those acrylic paints. And, uh, okay, here is the main, the main thing. We got our, uh, foam. This is insulation foam. Extruded polystyrene, I believe it is called. And, uh, comes in two basic sizes here in North America. Um, more, I think more sizes, but, uh, the basics are one inch and a half inch. As you can see, I have two of them here to demonstrate. Now, if you're going to be using the formula two inch, I mean not two inch, one inch uh, foam board, then these magnets here are perfect for uh, locking them into place, yes. But uh, you could also just uh, use these smaller ones, which we will see, and which I like using with the uh, half an inch. So you can get some of these, and these are available at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, or Rona, or wherever you want to go uh, in North America. I believe overseas, you guys have this super excellent different stuff like in England and Germany and everything, which I am super jealous of. And I wish I could use, but I can't. But this stuff's pretty good. Uh, with what uh, pretty much every North American diorama maker uses. So grab these, and uh, that'll be that. Now, if you want to have a door, which we do want a door for our diorama, look at this. This is just wood planks from the dollar store. These cost $2. You get five in a pack, and uh, it's just about... The right size for a 112 scale diorama door a little narrow a touch narrow but it still works for our purposes and uh, you don't even need this if you want to make a door you can really just use this foam uh, which will be fine but uh, in this case this is nice and easy already done for me and okay what else have we got here yes we have these uh, lights these lights are the best, super easy to use and uh, to put in your diodes. And these can be found on uh, Amazon as well, yes. And uh, I will show you the link and put up the name in the description. These are perfect and excellent. Okay, and over here we have DAP Fast and Final Lightweight Spackling. Yes, this spackle is uh, great if you want to achieve the uh, grout look inside uh, in between your brickwork um, and it can also be used just for to create texture different texture for walls and things which is uh, super amazing for dioramas okay so this is the basics yes we'll be using this to create our 112 scale uh, mini diorama for our detolf case and 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 this diorama that i'm making this in this video is going to be up on my Etsy store. So if you see it and you see me building it on this, you know, video and everything, and you want to buy it, head over to the uh, Etsy shop, and it's going to be available for forty-five dollars plus shipping. Yeah, amazing. Yes. So uh, yeah, what are we doing now? We're doing something. Oh yeah. By the way, um, besides all this stuff, let's mosey on over here. You may want. Have you ever done a walking scene before? We're doing it now. You may want like extra accessories in your diorama. There's all kinds of cool things you could uh, buy and such, like uh, bicycles and, and milk crates and different things. And look it up here. We even have motorcycles and garbage bins and bottles. And look at this sewer. Yeah. Darkness. Uh, so as you can see there's plenty of cool things you could add to these dioramas. It makes it super fun and amazing um, And that stuff can be found Really all over the web if you look Amazon, Aliexpress, eBay, 
Etsy, where my shop is, oh, let me tell you, there's some amazing stuff you can find on Etsy that's 112 scale. Um, check out, uh, I will make sure I'm going to get this name right first, and then I'll tell you where to check out for all these things later on in the video, once we've got some work done, okay? So let's dive right into the work. Grab your uh, materials and tools. Let's get started. Okay, we're making an executive decision here. So I have uh, two of these one inch thick uh, pieces that are about 12 by 12 uh, inches. And um, I kind of want to save these for something else that I'm going to be working on. And uh, this piece here is just shy of 12 inches long, um, but it is 24 inches tall. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, and uh, I think what you're going to do is we're just going to cut this in half and we're going to have a bottom and then the, the back and it'll be perfect. So let's just uh, go ahead and measure out 12 inches up here and we'll give it a straight cut. Voila! Perfect. Easy peasy. Obviously you can cut these things to the dimensions you like, um, but this is going to be a time saver for sure. Okay, here we are. Now let's... Uh Take our, look at that, perfectly 24 inches, I love it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our marker, I just use a dry erasable marker. It's uh, no big deal, any marker you're usually gonna get painted over anyways, but I'm just going to mark on the 12, and because I like doing it, I'm going to uh, mark again at the 12 at another spot. There, yes. Now you can't see this because I am not zoomed in, <laughs> but it's okay, those dots are there. And we're going to take our uh, angled ruler here. Yes, we're going to find our our spot here. Make sure we're nice and straight. And we're going to do our line. We Easy as that. Time to teach how to get the the good cuts. So we got our Exacto blade here. We want to make sure you're using a nice, like I said before, a nice sharp blade. It makes all the difference in the world. Because if you don't, I will show you what you can end up getting. Okay, see that? Uh, see these ugly choppy bits? Yeah, look at this. All this crumblies. Yeah. If your bl blade is dull, then it could catch, and it could cause this, and it's not too nice. Um, you can get away with it in areas if, if need be, um, but, you know, here we want, uh, we want as clean as can be. So, once you got your line measured up, what you're going to do is you're just going to, you're not going to try and cut Hercules through the whole thing uh, straight away. You may be able to, obviously, if it's not too thick like this is, um, but... What we want to do is we just want to go over it and score it. Um, not going through too much of it at first. And you want to be cutting. Let's see if I can uh, demonstrate here. You don't want to be cutting like this straight down. Because that's going to put a lot of pressure on where it's cutting. And you can get these choppy bits too, even with a sharp blade. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get as parallel to the foam as possible. So you're cutting like this. Yeah, just like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we're not gonna to aim to cut it in one foul swoop. We're gonna do a couple of passes or a few passes. So first, we're gonna score. And remember, don't cut your fingers. Be very safe. Then we're going to go again. And now I've seen some people just as it's scored like this, you just pick it up and bend it over like a table and then you can snap it and that'll give you a clean cut as well. But this, we're just going to be using this. And our third cut, we're going to go for the whole shebang, cutting it completely. We could hear it. We could hear that slice. And we got the perfect cut, slice salami. That's our, that's our dio done. <laughs> No, we got our boards, and it's going to be uh, perfect. Okay, so we have our two boards here, and uh, we know one of them is the base, and one of them is the back wall thingy, and uh, that's where we're at. Now, 
this is not really going to be too interesting as is. We got to have some things uh, here to uh, add to something, something. <laughs> yes, that is a door. We want a door, and then we want some place where we can put some lights so that we can light it up and look pretty cool. Now, if you want to make your uh, foam last even longer and go even farther, um, then uh, I suggest this. This 12 by 12 uh, inch base is uh, pretty big. If we're going to be displaying our figures and stuff, we might not necessarily need this much room. So how about we take off maybe like, I don't know, an inch? Let me uh, get the old ruler here. Okay, let's, let's take off two inches of this, so it's going to be ten inches um, deep instead. And then we'll take this two inch part and we're going to put it up here so we can stick some lights in. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here, we cut this off our base. And now we have our wall on the back and enough room here for some cool stuff. And then we have this. And what are we going to do with this? We're going to use this. Here, let's see. Uh, it's gonna be like something. Now, this is our base. <laughs> where, where am I even going with this? Let's go like this. Yeah, okay, here we go. So this is our base, this is our back wall, and now we have this guy. And we could either stick it up top like this, a little lip there, so we can have our lights poking through here. Or we can like, you know, play around with it, maybe bring it down a bit. Yeah, that could be interesting. What do you think? Yeah, we're gonna do that. But before we uh, decide where to fix this thing in uh, with our lights and uh, magnetize this together, we need to figure out where we're gonna put a door. Because uh, if we're going to put a door here, let's say, then obviously it's not gonna be good to put a magnet underneath this, right? So plan to do those things ahead of time. Figure out where your door is gonna go, um, and everything like that, so then you can uh, use your magnets wisely. Okay, I tell you what we're gonna do. Now, I have some dioramas which uh, I can show you that I've made that have this overhanging lip. It's a nice easy way to, uh, you know, just install some lights and create a li little bit of uh, shadow as well. Um, uh, and some depth to, to things instead of just, you know, flat, flat up and down. Um, to have your lights like this. But maybe we can just use this as a little bit of um, a detail piece. So something, something like uh, up here, or maybe even down here. Uh, let's let's just brainstorm here for a second. I'm thinking, I I don't want to do a standard brick wall and uh, door thing. I know this is going to be a simple diode. Um, but uh, let's make it like kind of, uh, I don't know, industrial kind of looking. So I want to have some like panels, uh, vertical panels going up, at least half of this. And then half maybe we'll make like a brick, um, like a standard gray kind of cementy brick looking thing. But uh, then what are we going to do with this? Can we still have this? Maybe? Put it up here? Or maybe it can be used somewhere else around here hmm let's uh, let's think this through but for now I think what we're gonna do is we're going to our light is gonna be installed above our door and I'm just gonna have it sticking out like this and that might seem weird but for our industrial thing purposes it might uh, it might work perfectly so we're gonna do that um, but first uh, first things first we gotta get this door installed so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the dimensions of this door, and then we're going to mark it, and then we're going to cut it out. Yes, then we'll know where to uh, do all of our magnets. You know what? I think I was just saying you could use this as a door, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, that is uh, an extra way, like I said, to save on materials, so you don't really need this. But also, um, this wood, uh, will have us doing like an extra step. If this is going to be an industrial kind of uh, diorama that I want, um, a wooden door isn't going to cut it. Now I could paint this, obviously, any color I like, um, but sometimes you'll be able to see the wooden texture through the paint. And that might not be the best for this particular diorama that I want to do. Um, you could get rid of this wooden texture by, you know, using some Mod Podge 
um, and that'll give it uh, a nice, uh, you know, neutral kind of. Uh, <laughs> what am I talking about? Not you know, not wood. It won't look wood anymore. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but that's an extra step which we don't uh, we don't have to do at the moment. Um, so and just to make this easier, let's uh, ditch the wooden door. We'll keep our foam cut out from this foam door. We know it's going to fit perfectly back here. And we'll just slot that in, uh, easy peasy. And uh, we'll be able to paint it up without any extra steps. And we're probably going to add some uh, extra detail to this door as well. But we'll tackle that um, shortly. Okay, so now we know where our magnets are going to go. We're going to have one here, definitely. And then some along here. And uh, speaking of magnets, I will show you where we get them and what they are. We are using um, six by two millimeters. So six millimeter by two millimeter. And these are from Amazon. Ta-da, check it out. $16.99 here in Canada for 180 of them. Perfect. And you know what's great about using these magnets uh, in particular? Is they're so easy to install and I will show you how. First, let's get our trusty glue gun plugged in and heating up. And then I'll show you how this trusty generic pen is going to uh, do everything we need. All right, so we need to uh, put some magnets into our, our boards here and uh, fix it into place. And to do that, like I said, we have our trusty pen here. Now watch, watch this. We just take the pen and we're going to press it right into here, like so, and create a little hole. Now you don't want to go too deep, um, so just like kind of, if you look at the thickness of the magnet, you'll be able to tell kind of how, how deep you have to go so that this can sit nicely in there. And then we're going to uh, put some hot glue in there and uh, set our magnets in. So we got one here, and then we just want to work it along and uh, put in as many as you need. What I like to do uh, is I like to start on the corners so we get an idea. So one there and then one back here like that and then we can maybe see how much more we need. I think we can get away with doing just two more. One here and perhaps one there. Yeah that should do it. Now it's important to have a glue gun, a hot glue gun, that uh, is hot reaches like you know some hot temperatures this one is not the most expensive glue gun but it does have a hot a hotter setting um, I recommend yeah definitely getting that because if you just have the lower quality cheaper um, even cheaper than this uh, the glue doesn't really get as hot as it would need to and doesn't really you'll have issues with things sticking and coming out and such and then we just squish it flush in there. You gotta make these sound effects, it helps. It helps things. See? Voila! Yay! And now, this will stick as well as can be. And even if you want to, uh, later on when we're painting things up, when uh, you paint over these, it'll help it uh, stick even more. So now that we have all of our magnets, in place. We need to fix it to this board. How are we going to do that, you might ask? How do you know where they line up? I will show you. So, we get out even more magnets and we fix a magnet We do this. We fix a magnet each to our magnets. <laughs> if you catch my drift, yeah, we're just sticking extra magnets there so that they stick out like this. And why we're doing that, um, it's uh, very important. We're going to put it into place where we want it, and then we're going to push down and create an impression, a circle impression, where the magnet is. Then that's where we know we can make the holes to fit. Now, before we do that, 
I'm not going to do it just like this. I'm not going to go ahead and press it into this. You know why? Because we created a uh, weak point here. This part in particular with this door. Now, when we're pressing down, we might press down and kind of bend this piece in a little bit or flex it out. Uh, and then we'll create like a little bit more of a wonky shape for the door. And then when we go to put the door back in, it might not fit because it might be too tight or uh, it might just have all these like gaps, this big gap or something in it because it wasn't, uh, it wasn't flush um, when we put it in. So what we're gonna do is since we know we're using this piece uh, that we cut out for our door, I'm gonna put it back. I'm gonna fix this back in here and get it nice and, and uh, solid again, like so. And now we're going to uh, do our little squish, squish down. So just line it up where you like. And then we're going to press down with all our might. Okay, I'm not really pressing down that hard because I don't want to break the foam, obviously. You got to be careful. Um, but I'm pressing down enough to make uh, the impression, which, voila, see? You can see right here. Look what we did. Perfect. Yeah. And then uh, once you do that, <laughs> a very important extra little bit of information here. Um, remember, the magnets, they have like a, what is it, uh, north and south, south polarization or something for where they stick. So one side sticks, the other side will repel. Now you wanna make sure that when we go ahead and uh, put one in, I'll show you here. When we put the glue there and we get ready for this magnet, we wanna make sure we're putting it in the side that's gonna stick. So when I take this off, I know it's sticking this away, right? So I'm just going to flip that magnet over and put it in there. That way it is going to stick when uh, we put this over top and it's not gonna repel and then uh, it's gonna be a disaster. And then you have to remove the magnets and put them in the right way. So always double check and make sure when you're putting in your magnets that they're going in the right way. So our magnets are in, but I'm not going to go ahead and attach this just yet because I like the I like to let the glue sit and do its thing, work its magic before I start pulling on it with magnets and such. So we're just going to put this aside and we're going to move on to some detail work. Yes. So now that we have uh, this piece ready to go, I know we said we wanted to do something with this. And uh, at first we're thinking, you know, you could have it overhanging like this to put the lights in, but now we want a light that's going to be right here. Um, so maybe this can work as just a detail bit up here somehow. That could possibly work. But uh, before we get on to that, we know, or at least I know, I want the bottom quarter of this to be brick. And then we want the rest to be kind of like a horizontal, no, vertical, yes, vertical paneling. So let's go ahead and just uh, kind of map this out. Just doesn't have to be exact. Um, it's just got to be straight because we don't want no weird crooked, crooked brick thingy. So we're not even going to bother drawing it or anything. We're just going to go straight ahead and score. Okay. That's where our brick is going to live. Right in this area. Okay, so we'll, we'll get on to the brick in a minute. Um, let's go ahead and do some vertical panel lines. And for that, that's where this uh, ruler comes into play. So as you can see, the beauty of this uh, ruler is we have um, all the various line markers here indicating, uh, what would these be? I don't know, centimeters or, I know this is inches, these big, big ones. And maybe these are different centimeter bits. 
Who knows? I'm not very savvy when it comes to these uh, number stuff. Uh, so, all I know is that these are evenly spaced out points and they help you uh, kind of decide how big you want things to be. And uh, for this purposes of this, maybe I'm just going to go with a half an inch panels. Yeah, half inch panel sounds good. So I'm going to line it up where that half inch mark is. I'm going to go ahead and do a score. Here we have our vertical cuts made. And uh, we're gonna spruce that up in a second, but first we're gonna figure out the brick. And the brick is gonna be pretty easy. Um, we're gonna make it full inch thick. This is gonna be bigger, bigger brick. We want these to be bigger, bigger looking brick. Okay, so am I upside down? I think I'm upside down. Okay, here we go. So the brick is gonna be bigger, bigger brick, and it's okay that we have this smaller bit on the bottom because uh, that's, that's no, no biggie. So once we make our horizontal lines where the brick are gonna be, then we need to do our, uh, you know, our vertical lines to separate them out here. And uh, very simple, we just, figure out how big we want it. And I guess we're just gonna make these like, I don't know, if they're an inch, then uh, we're gonna go an inch in. Let's be symmetrical here, kind of somehow, something. Yeah, and we're just going to go, so we measured uh, an inch in, and then we're going to do a score down the first brick. We're gonna skip this brick because that's gonna be the, um, the, uh, something, you'll see. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. And then the next one, when we do our inch, we're just going to do that middle one. Make sure I got it all lined up here. So we're just kind of alternating inch by inch. Okay, there's what we're looking like. We got our brick and then we got our vertical lines. Okay, wait, sorry for the abrupt ending to this video, but this is just going too long. If I keep this up, this video is going to be over an hour. Who wants to watch that? Not me. <laughs> I mean, surely I do. Um, but anyways, the second part of this video will be dropping later on today, so don't worry. Um, it just been too long. This is what happens when you don't have time to plan up videos and you just wing it. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And uh, there's also an unofficial first part to this diorama school series, and that is the uh, hunting for diorama supplies at Walmart video, seen here, or here. Yeah. So if you want, go check out that. Uh, that was made a long time ago, but uh, it still has some pretty cool and relevant things in there. So go check that out, and uh, wait for the second video of this later on today, and then the uh, third part of the video of painting in the weeks to come. Bye for now.